But, Coach, it seems incredible that any man can be so fast. Fast? I saw him with my own eyes. I tell you, Dean, he's the fastest human being in the whole world. If we don't grab him, Bovina will. Then get him. Well, what's keeping you? We can't afford to let Bovina tie up the world's fastest trumpet player. Have you located Professor Roberts? No, but I'm trying. Well, stop trying. Do something. Gymnasium? Hello, is Professor Roberts there, please? We got him, Dean. You mean Roberts? No, the new victory song. It's a pip. It's colossal. It's terrific. It's stupendous. It's swing. Sentiment that's real. Maybe I'm behind the time, but this is how I feel. An old-fashioned melody has charm and simplicity. Oh, I can't seem to sing a song that has swing. I can't go dee 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 da dee 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 da dee da dee. An old-fashioned melody that's old-fashioned lyrically. Oh, will give you the thrill that swing never will when it goes dee dee da dee 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 da dee dee dee. Crazy rhythm breaking loose to a trumpet scream. Can't get with them. What's the use? It's all a dizzy dream. You'll find an old-fashioned mellow tune when sung neath a yellow moon. Oh, we'll add to romance. So why take a chance? On swing, sing an old-fashioned melody. What does that make you think of, Joan? It makes me think of Venice, moonlight on the waters of the canal, and mandolins and gondolas, and Robert Taylor. Oh, it makes me think of you too, Artemis. Good music represents an ideal, Joan, an ideal of the composers, something that he has seen or felt and has endeavored to picture in his composition. But swing and jazz, oh, good heavens, that's barbaric. It's like the tom-toms of the African jungle. They're purely physical. But real music, oh, that stimulates the spirit and is like food to the starving soul. You know, Artemis, you are a real artist. I can't understand why your classes here aren't more popular. Well, you're not like the other girls, Joan. Well, they're swing mad, savages at heart, dancing to the beating of those tom-toms. Oh, Professor, I didn't expect to find you here. <laughs> I didn't know you had a student. The dean wants to see you in his office. The dean wants to see me? 
Thank you. Don't thank me. If you hurry, you'll only be two hours late. The fact of the matter is, Professor Roberts, what this college needs today is youth. We're too old-fashioned. But I'm not old. It isn't age that places you behind the eight ball. It's your antiquated ideas. They stink. The uh, professor means that your ideas must coincide with ours. Swing along with the spirit of the age. But, gentlemen, the theories I teach are ageless. They've gone on for centuries and will continue to go on until the end of time. Do I understand, Artemis J. Roberts, that you fail to see the error of your ways? If so, we have but one alternative, and that is to ask for your resignation at once. Very well, gentlemen. You have it. One more note, sir. You are a musician? Yes, sir. You gotta prove that before you do any eating around this conservatory. I'd be delighted to. You do the playing, we'll do the listening. Yes, sir. Get set, fellas. It looks like swing. Open 
your eyes and you will see the world at your command. The best of all things in life are free, and that's why I feel so grand. I've got the sun above, the earth below, the summer breeze, the winter snow. Oh, what more could I ask for? I'm richer than a millionaire. I've got a song to sing, a carefree melody. I've got the time to roam, I'm where I choose to be. What more could I ask for? I'm richer than a millionaire. Well, I haven't got a penny in my pocket. No, I'm broke for fair. But I have found that pennies in your pocket Don't guarantee that you'll be free of care So I'll go on my way And I'll be so content The world's a home to me But I don't pay the rent Oh, what more could I ask for? I'm richer than a millionaire I've got the sun above, I've got the earth below, I've got the summer breeze, I've got the wind to snow. One more could I ask for, I'm richer than a millionaire. I've got a song to sing, a carefree melody, I've got the time to roam, I'm where I choose to be. What more could I ask for? morning, isn't it? No lovelier than yesterday morning and all the mornings before. Well, you speak like a professor of philosophy. My name is Jeremiah Daniels, a Ph.D., L.L.D., L.I.T.T., and uh, M.A. Artemis J. Roberts, D.M. Delighted, Professor, delighted. Listen, we got to take care of your little professor. He don't know nothing about his life. He was going to take them out and show them the ropes. You'll make a glad addition to our little colony. Thank you, Professor. Here you are, Professor. Well, thank you. They look as good as new. Good as new? <laughs> Why, they're better. They're guaranteed for 50,000 miles. <laughs> they speak of the truth. <laughs> Come along, Professor. It's time you and I were going to work. Work? Sure, we all work around here. I'm going to take you out and show you how to make some real dough. Dough? Money. With a voice like yours, we should be able to rake it in without even half trying. Well, I haven't got a penny 
in my pocket. No, I'm broke for fair. But I have found the pennies in your pocket. Thanks. Can you tell me where the post office is, please? Uh, two blocks south, madam. Oh, thank you, sir. Don't guarantee that you'll be free of care. So I'll go on my way, and I'll be so content. The world's a home to me, but I don't pay the rent. Oh, what more could I ask for? I'm richer than a million heirs. So I'll go on my way, and I'll be so content. The world's a home to me, but I don't pay the rent. Who are you? Children were members of the Shamrock League Club, officer. What's your name? Michael Patrick O'Toole. And what's yours? Sure, and that's just what I thought. <laughs> well, what do you think of the joint, Teddy? All right. All right. Get a load of that. Fifty grand it costs, and she says it's all right. How do you know what it costs, Toby? Well, Lou says... That's that... what my pal says. And he ought to know. Sure, he paid for it, didn't he? Say, who is this pal of yours, Lou? No, nobody you'd know, Sugar. He's a guy with a lot of dough that wants to get into the nightclub racket. He asked me if I could suggest someone to run it for him, and I told him about you. Sure, you're not the guy that's putting up the dough? Now, wait a minute, baby. You know me. You bet your sweet life I know you. That's why I'm not getting into anything till I know what it's about. Well, what's the matter? Don't you believe me? Well, I'd like to, Lou, but Randall offered me a job in his club. Randall? Randall? Why, he ought to be given the works for even think you'd work for him. Well, I turned it down. Teddy Ross is making good on her own. I know that, baby. That's why I thought you'd be interested in this guy's proposition. You can see it's a swell layout and strictly on the up and up. Yes, but it's a little too swell, Lou. Suppose Randall takes it into his head to muscle in. Not a chance, sister. There won't be anything to muscle in on. This guy's proposition is strictly on the level. It's 110% ethic. Well, I'm not promising anything. Not until I meet this friend of yours in person. Fair enough. She's got to meet him. How about tomorrow? Oh, that's OK with me. How about you, Lou? Huh? Oh, well, sure, baby. Anything you say, uh -huh. I... Well, I've got to get back to the theater. I'm still a working girl, you know. Yeah, but not for long. Not in that dump. Come on, I'll put you in a cab. Bye, Teddy. I'll be waiting for you after the show. See you later, darling. He dropped his wallet. Hey, mister, you dropped your wallet. It's thick, isn't it? Let's see. Holy jumping cow! It's a fortune. But I must return it to him at once. I want to see that gentleman that just went inside. No help wanted. But wait a minute, mister. You don't understand. I want to talk to you. Here I had it all doped out so I never would have to produce this guy. And you get us into a jam by telling her she can meet him tomorrow. That'd be easy, Chief. Show her the way to luck. He just flew in from Chicago. She wouldn't know him. No, the heat's on him. I gotta have somebody else. 
What about Snatcho Riley? He's on parole. Listen, Mug. I've got to have a guy who looks straight, acts straight, and is straight. A guy who thinks a racket is something you play a game with. You know, Randall would be in a tough spot if he knew what Lou was up to. You mean Lou'd be in a spot? But how's Randall to know? He's got a mob, ain't he? He's no chump. How'd you get in here, buddy? Well, I just climbed through the window. Just a minute. What do you want? We're assisting the lady in the taxi cab. Well, why didn't you keep it? Well, that wouldn't have been honest. Wait a minute, boss. Maybe this is just a racket. What's a racket? Why, it's something you play tennis with. Just what the doctor ordered. Okay, boys. I want to have a talk with you. Now, do you understand, Professor? Now, let me see. You mean that you're willing to spend all of this money just to give the girl you love an exalted position in life without letting her know about it? Mr. Morgan, you are a philanthropist. How wise cracks. That's it exactly, Professor. You see, she'll think you own the joint, and that way we'll feel under no obligations to me. But suppose she doesn't approve of the manner in which I'm running the establishment. Well, in that case, we'll just let the young lady run it her own way. Yeah. We don't want no trouble with no Janes. Well, it's a great opportunity, and I'll do the best I can to please you, Mr. Morgan, but do you suppose I'll be worth the money that... Well, now, we'll let Toby worry about that. He hasn't anything else to do. By the way, uh, what type of music will you have here? The very best. Nothing's too good for this joint. Splendid, splendid. And tomorrow you'll move into my apartment, Professor, where I can sort of uh, coach you along. Very well, gentlemen. I accept your proposition. Sold. <laughs> That's old-fashioned, lyrically. Oh, we'll give you the thrill that swing never will. Uh, uh, that's fine, Artie, but you don't quite get what I mean. But good music represents an ideal, Miss Ross. An ideal of the composer, something that he has seen or felt. Something that he has endeavored to picture in his composition. Yes, I know, Artie, but if you play that sort of music in a nightclub, you're through before you even start. I suppose you're going to tell me to swing it. Of course. People go to nightclubs for a spring tonic or a highball. They want to be pepped up. You know, we're living party. Everything today is rhythm, tempo, and speed. Really? Sure. You know, you've got to give the public what they want if you want to get your money out of this place. Isn't that right, Lou? Tomorrow it may be something else, but today it's swing. I'm almost beginning to believe you're right, Teddy. I mean, uh, Miss Rawls. <laughs> That song of yours has possibilities, Artie, but you've got to learn how to put some snap into it. Wait a minute, I'll show you. Well, Frank, give me a swing tune.
Joan. I got your wire and took the first train. It was awfully nice of you to offer me a position. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Here. Come here, I want you to meet a couple of friends of mine. This is Teddy Ross. She's uh, helping me here run the place. And Mr. Lou Morgan. Miss Dennis. I'm glad to know you. The pleasure's mutual. This is the girl I told you about. Show them what you can do, Joan. Um, now? Sure. Have you got any music? Yes, sir. Then follow me. Please. Has she had any experience, Lou? I don't know. What difference does it make? Paying the bills. Plenty to me. I want this place to pay. An old-fashioned melody Calm and simplicity I can't seem to sing The song that has swing I can't go down Just a minute, please. Have you any other numbers? Oh, dozens of them. Are they all like that one? Uh, no, some of them are ballads. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, honey, but that type of number would never go in a nightclub. Well, how do you know? Have you ever tried it? No, I've never tried it. I understand it was popular when Grandma was a girl. Miss Ross is right, Artemis. I didn't know this was a nightclub when you sent for me. Perhaps I'd better go back home. Oh, no, you're going to stay right here and have your chance to sing before the public and teach them the better things in music. Sure. It might be a novel. Novel. Hey, Le Green, what do you think? That stuff went out with East Lynn. Can you dance? A little. Pull up your skirts. What? Oh, come on, come on. I want to get a gander at your gams. Look, she'll just sing. You'll build your dance around her. I ain't no magician. Don't you ain't. I don't like it. All right. Maybe I can crank something that'll fit her. That's better. <laughs> You know what we could do? We could take that... Wait a minute. Hello, Lou. Hello, Randall. Who is that gentleman? Randall, a racketeer. Getting a little ambitious, aren't you, moving up in this territory? What do you mean? Pretty nice layout. No wonder Teddy couldn't see my offer. So you think you'll get a chance to open up? You're barking up the wrong tree. The joint belongs to the professor over there. Honest, I got nothing to do with it. Don't make me laugh. I'm in no mood to listen to funny stories. That's a fact, Randall. You ought to know I wouldn't work for Lou any more than I would for you. Just a minute. So you're the professor, eh? Well, that's what they call me, but I... I get it. It's an alias. What's your idea in opening up this joint? Well, I'm combining business with pleasure. I sing and play. Where does Lou fit in the setup? Oh, Lou's just a friend of mine. He's uh, helped me out around here till I get acquainted. I'm a stranger here. Stranger, huh? Where'd you come from? Illinois. Chicago? Well, right near there. Okay. If you're looking for that nervous mug, he turn the lamb. <laughs> so you can't take it, eh? When you tied up with my boys, you said you was tough. What gave you the jitters? Afraid of Lou? No, boss, it's the other guy, the professor. His bunch has got the finger on me. That's the reason I have to blow up here. So that's really the big shot, huh? Yeah. Well, why didn't you put me wise when you first lamped him? I didn't recognize him until I heard his name. When he said about playing and singing, I got it. I never had a gander at the professor in the flesh. Ah, so he's joining up with Lou. That's bad. He's dynamite, Chief. He's got the best organized setup in the West. And we don't want them chiseling in here. What this situation calls for is diplomacy and brains. Hey, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> this will help.
How do you like the party? Oh, it's scrumptious. But I'd rather have taken Joan to some quiet, secluded spot on her first night in town. Now, if you're going to run a nightclub, you have to meet people like these, aren't you? Learn how to please them. Yes, I suppose I should study this situation from every aspect. <laughs> that music is coming from the most popular spot in town. See how it peps them up? Say, it does kind of get under your skin after you listen to it a while, doesn't it? Now, aren't you glad you met us? Oh, I thought it just another introduction. And I didn't want to take a chance. But it doesn't take a Sherlock Holmes deduction to realize that it's become a sweet romance. I'm sort of kind of glad I met you. You're sort of just the kind for me. I'm as lucky as the fella who found an old umbrella when it rained unexpectedly. I'm sort of kind of glad I know you. You sort of like a dream come true. I'm as happy as a skipper who flew the China Clippers across the ocean blue. You're absolutely marvelous. You're positively grand. I feel more excited than Columbus did when he discovered land. Oh, I'm sort of kind of glad I love you. In fact, I love you from the start. I'm delighted that I met you, but I won't forget you. You're sort of, sort of. yes, kind of, kind of. You positively took my heart. Tell me they put the eggs in a machine and they come out chickens? I can hardly believe it. They call the machine an incubator. Haven't you ever seen one? No. No, I've never been in the country. Say, uh, tell me, uh, you sure this isn't done with mirrors? No, with heat. Heat? Well, you know, we use heat too, but not on the kind of eggs you're talking about. They do a lot of things with electricity on the farm, even to making the hens lay more eggs put an electric light over them, and they think it's daylight. Oh, I get it. You double-cross them. Well, tell me, what happens if you put two globes over them? Well, I suppose you'd get twice as many eggs. Science sure is wonderful. Where are we going after the party breaks up? Uh, no place. The professor and I'll drive you girls home. Oh, I don't want to go home. You don't? Well, where do you want to go? Shall we start with Randall first? Randall? Yes. His club is on my list of things to see. Then there's the uh, Century Bullet. That ought to be exciting. I have a midnight show. And then there's... Uh... Come on. 
Let's go inside. Sorry, I must have forgot. <laughs> Who says he can't dance? Boy, that was a humdinger. <laughs> well, it looks like that. Oh, no, you don't, Professor. This is my dance. Artemis, you're not only listening to the Tom Toms, you're playing them. Oh, merely as an interested bystander, Joan. They're awfully nice, aren't they? An ideal couple. They're engaged? Practically. Oh, then Artemis, let's go somewhere. I want to see the sights. Well, what sights? Randall, just for a few minutes. We can come right back. Not a bad idea, Joan. I should like to analyze the manner in which he runs his establishment. We ought to let them know where we're going so they won't worry about us. Very well, I'll go see. Don't interrupt the dance. We'll write them a note. Dancing, we're going out for a few minutes. Sure. Hey, boss, I got a ticket on the land. Now what's eating you? The professor's out there in the cafe. So what? That's just the chance I've been waiting for. Eddie's bringing them in. Here? Certainly. <laughs> Hello, Professor. Nice to see you. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Miss Dennis. Oh, yes, I remember. Won't you sit down? Sit down, Professor. Now, I want to have a little talk with you. You're just in time for the new floor show. Oh, thank you, Mr. Randall. We'd rather not be conspicuous. I get it. You don't want to be seen. Well, how about a little drink on the house? Lemon soda, Joan? Oh, 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 oh boy, that's a hot one coming from you, Professor. <laughs> Toby, you seen the professor in that little corn pit? Yeah, they went out. Out? Where? Search me. Well, why didn't you stop them? Hey, look, Chief, I ain't their bodyguard. She's liable to get into trouble running around loose. Listen, he's just as gullible as she is. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe they said where they was going in that note. Note? What note? The one she gave me. Well, why didn't you say you had a note in the first place? Come on, come on, give it to me. Don't get excited, Chief. I had it a minute ago. Professor, I'm a big guy in this man's town. You and me ought to be friends. Well, if we get better acquainted, we might Well, not. we know each other's reputations. Ain't that enough? Well, I don't know. Maybe I can do you a lot of good. You know, I like you, Professor. You know, there's plenty of room in this town for both of us. Oh, I'm sure there is. Will you have a cigarette? No, thanks. I don't use them. I'll bet you could use my brand. Friends, Professor? Do you mean you're trying to buy my friendship? What do you think? But, but I'm not accustomed to accepting bribes, Mr. Randall. What's the matter? Ain't it enough? Enough? Good heavens. Wait. But, but I'm not in the habit of selling my friendship, Mr. Randall. Oh, well, we get it. Use it to buy the little lady a birthday present. 
How'd you know tomorrow was my birthday? Lady, it's a gift. Well, seeing that you're so insistent. Friends, swell. And now we must be going. Uh, how are we going to get home? I'll take care of that, too. Yes, Chief. Have my car brought around out front. A pal of mine wants to be on his way. I can't imagine where it could have gone. I had it here a minute ago. Somebody must have frisked me. Hey, I got it. Hey, I knew it there all the time. What does it say? Go on to Randall's. We'll be back soon. Randall's? He'll rub them out, sure. Come on, Toby. Oh, hello. Where have you been? We've just been over to Mr. Randall's. Didn't he get tough with you? Tough? On the contrary, he was most polite. He wanted to buy my friendship. What? Sure, at first I refused to accept the money. Money? What money? Well, the money that he got out of the safe. He said I could use it to buy Joan a birthday present. Me. I think this is the machine you were referring to. This is our very latest model. Uh, model 88. Oh, yes, sir. This is where the eggs are placed. The period of incubation is 21 days. Well, I can hardly believe it. And now, that machine is called a brooder. The very last word, our uh, number 11G. After the chicks are hatched out, they... Put them in there for? Delight is an artificial substitute for the warmth of their mother. Mom! Send this machine to my office. And uh, some eggs? And don't forget their mammy. <laughs> Fine. What's the name, please? Lou Morgan. Lou Morgan? Yeah, you want to make something out of it? Oh, that's quite all right, Mr. Morgan. One, model 88, 111G, eggs. Songs that Grandma sang sound better upside down. An old-fashioned melody with gay ninety harmony was okay for Ma and okay for Paul. But let me deed deed body deed la da da la da. An old-fashioned melody. Don't mean a thing to me. Read them breaking loose to a trumpet scream. Boy, I'm with them, taint no use. Swimming against the stream, you'll find an old fashioned mellow tune. When sound neath a yellow moon, oh, will add to romance. So why take a chance on swing? Sing an old fashioned melody. I'm breaking loose to a trumpet scream. <laughs> Boy, I'm with them, ain't no use. Bow, 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 bow. Oh, oh, my old fashioned melody is not what it used to be. For I've learned most in the old thing you see. I'll take a swing, oh fashion, oh swing, fashion melody, oh baby, da da da. All right. Why, Artemis? Will you do your number now, Joan? We want to time it. Frank. 
in there. And you see that gadget? That turns on the heat. And in 21 days, out pops the chicken. And you expect me to believe that? Oh, no, I wasn't born yesterday. Well, if you wait around long enough, you can see with your own eyes. And then you take the chickens out of there and you put them in that thingamajig there. And they think it's their mother. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you expect me to go for that one? Hey, I knew a guy who had a machine once, and you put a fin in it, and out popped a 20. But when you went to spend it, it turned out to be a phony. No, I got this all doped out. It's terrific. I tell you, the possibilities are stupendous. That machine holds 100 eggs. 12 of them machines, that's 1,200 chicks every three weeks. Wow. You know what we're paying for chickens in this joint? Don't you hijack them no more? No. We're paying a buck a piece for them. I don't know what you're paying for them, but you're getting three and a half a boy. A buck a piece. With enough machines, I can make a million. I'm gonna start with a thousand machines. Hey, listen, sweetheart. You're being taken for an ump chain. I'll bet that dame makes a sweet piece of change off every one of those phony gadgets she turns over. Oh, Toby, you're dumb. You're ignorant. You don't know anything about human nature. Anybody can see that, that Joan's a girl in a million. You said that about Teddy. I know. Yeah, and Dolores. Yeah, shut up. She knows things that I never dreamed of. I know you felt that way, Chief. Well, I do. Do you want to make something of it? <laughs> Get a load of that! I still don't believe it! Hi, Joan. What a lovely fur. Yes, where did you get it? Oh, uh, Lou read a graph. He said I should go the uh, lemon on opening night. But that jewelry looks genuine. Oh, it is. It belonged to Lou's mother, and he hated to keep them locked up in the safety deposit box all the time, so he insisted that I wear them. <laughs> oh, I see. Joan, you shouldn't have taken those things from Lou, even if they were just alone, because Teddy didn't like it. She did seem rather upset. And it wasn't at all nice of you to keep him away from rehearsal because Teddy didn't like to... Oh, I'm sorry, Artemis. I didn't realize it was getting so late. Well, it looks as though you're deliberately trying to come between a couple to whom we should be grateful. You see, Teddy, it was this way. She wouldn't accept the stuff knowing it was a gift any more than you would. So you're pulling the same fast one on Joan you tried to pull on me. Well, what do you mean? I mean, she's too unsophisticated to see through your scheme, Lou, but you don't think for a minute I didn't know who was putting the money in this place. Well, Teddy, if you knew I got the dough, what did you stick on for? Because of him. Oh, Lou, he's so helpless. Oh. Hmm. Joan, I don't own this place at all. I was just a figurehead for Lou. Why, well, strictly business. I was just doing it for Lou. And yet, and yet when I was dancing with her and 
holding her in my arms, I... Get out of here quick. Artemis! Why, I've been unfaithful to my trust. We gotta go home at once. Now? Sure, go pack your things. I'll meet you at Lou's apartment. <laughs> Aren't they cute, little mugs? Imagine you playing papa to a bunch of baby chicks. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the professor getting into a cab that little Joan game. He's taking her up to your apartment. And he shook hands and said goodbye. Goodbye? Lou, getting back. We're not finished rehearsing. I'm not worried about rehearsing. I'm worried about Joan. Well, what's going on here? Where's Joan? She'll be here in a minute. She's packing her things. Packing? Yeah, we're going away, Lou. Oh, no, you're not. Not with my girl. Your girl? That's what I said. Now, wait a minute, Lou. You mean you're in love with her? Yeah. You want to make something of it? Oh, no, of course not. But, but what about Teddy? That's what I'm asking you. If you think you're going to take a run-out powder on her after making her fall in love with you, you're crazy. Say that again slower, will you, Lou? I can't believe my ears. Where were you and Joan headed for? Well, we were just going back home. You're remaining here with Teddy. Joan and I are going back home. But I can't do that, Lou. I've deceived her. Well, I couldn't look her in the face when she finds out that I lied to her about owning that swing club. You do own it. What do you mean? Just a minute. Say, what are you going to do? I'm going to give you the deeds to the joint. All you have to do is sign your name and record them, and the place is yours for keeps. Get a load of this. The well-known American racketeer, commonly called the Professor by the Underworld, was deported today from Liverpool. Then that four-eyed looking rube's a phony, huh? Yeah, and we got a job to do. Tie him up in the kitchen. Where's Lou and the professor? They're not here. Okay, I'm waiting. What's the matter? Get a load of this. Well, send me a postcard from Niagara. Hey, if I could, I'd send you the falls. Give our love to Teddy. <laughs> After I give her my own. Goodbye, Artemis, and... Uh... Watch out for those tom toms. <laughs> you know, this is one time I'm going to face a judge and I won't have to put up bail. <laughs> Come on, sugar. Goodbye. Take good care of yourselves. Lou! Where's Lou? Well, he isn't here. Where'd he go? To Oakdale. Well, what's all the excitement about? Well, it looks like the fireworks. Why? Randall's my friend. He's got a perfect right to hey, go. Hey, don't you get it? Randall's taking the joint over. And who do you think he's got locked up in the office? Who? Teddy! Well, why didn't you shoot him? Why? Come on, Mug, let's scram out of here. You can't barge over there without a mob. I'll get a mob. Come on. Okay, Chief. <laughs>
You can't get away with that. Randolph! Randall, don't! Take it easy. Professor, eh? That's the guy, boys. Yeah, we'll take him to jail. That's too bad about poor Randall. Oh. Chief? Will you marry me? We don't need this, Artie. Oh, don't call me Artie. Call me Professor. <laughs> I'm sorta of kinda glad I love you. Oh, in fact, I loved you from the start. I'm delighted that I met you. You bet I won't forget you. You sorta. Of, sorta? Of. Yes, kinda. Kinda? I bet y'all figured it would end this way. You absolutely fill my 